Hi everyone, I am Arun Santosh, Senior Solution Architect with QuickSide. In this video, I will be talking to you about how you can integrate your SageMaker models into QuickSide's dataset layer. We are looking at SaaS Sales dataset. This is the dataset we use in our workshops. It has sales records for a fictitious software company. This data set has got several columns like the country and city where the order was placed, the sales rep who is working on it, the segment under which the customer falls, so on and so forth. We also have a training data set wherein we have additional information for historical orders as to whether that order was completed within SLA or not. So that's this SLA met column here with an yes or no against the each of those order records. Now we can use this training data within SageMaker to train a binary classification model and then we'll be able to use that model to predict whether new orders that are coming in uh, are likely to have the order completed with an SLA or not. So let's dive in and see how we can set that up. From AWS console, let's search for SageMaker and launch it. From SageMaker console, let's launch SageMaker Studio. When we come here for the first time, we have this kickstart option and we'll use that. The username, I'm just going to call this my SageMaker. Under execution role, there is option to create a new role. So I'll go with that. I'll stick with the defaults and choose the create role option and then choose submit button here as mentioned in the status message SageMaker needs some time to configure the resources needed for the studio and this could take several minutes so I'll post this video and then I'll resume once the environment is ready Okay, SageMaker Studio is now ready, so let's click Open Studio. This step also takes several minutes when we are doing it for the very first time. So I'll be pausing this video and will resume soon after the studio becomes available. The studio environment is now up. Let's create a new autopilot experiment. I'll call this my order completion SLA. We have the option to upload data from S3 buckets. I have already loaded the training data into my S3 bucket here. So I'll select the bucket and then select the training data set from it. We have to select which target column we want SageMaker to predict. So that will be our SLA met column where we had the yes or no values so I select that here we have to provide an output folder where SageMaker can create content so I'll select the same bucket and therein I had created an output folder so I'll select that as the directory name and for machine learning problem type I know since we are looking to predict between yes and no this is a binary classification, so I make that selection. And I'll choose not to automatically deploy this. I'll do that manually at a later stage. So I'll turn auto deploy to off and click create experiment. As mentioned here, SageMaker generates 250 models and then selects the best model from it. And this whole process can take several hours to complete. So again, I'll be pausing this video and will resume once the model generation is complete. The experiment has completed and SageMaker has now identified the best model. So with that model selected, 
I'm going to click on deploy model and then choose the deployment setting. I'll give an endpoint name and scroll down, click on deploy model. Now let's switch over to SageMaker console and look at this under inference and under endpoints. We'll see that the new endpoint is now being created. We don't really need an endpoint uh, to use the SageMaker model with QuickSight. Because QuickSight will be invoking the model in batch transform mode. So along with the endpoint, this model has also been uh, created here. And we can reference this model from within our QuickSight data set edit interface. I'll switch back to endpoints and I'll delete this endpoint straight away to avoid incurring additional cost. If this endpoint is still being created, you will have to wait for it to succeed and be in in-service status ahead of being able to delete it. We need to allow QuickSight to access SageMaker service. For that, we will launch QuickSight Management Console from there bring up security and permissions add or remove services scroll down select SageMaker from here and click update you can click the QuickSight icon to exit management console i have also created a schema file which contains details of the input columns which were there in the training data set that i used the output column uh, which the model predicts and it also calls out the instance type to be used for running the batch transform i'll be using this uh, to provide all this information uh, while plugging in the SageMaker model into QuickSight dataset from QuickSight, i'll launch SAS sales dataset choose to edit it and click augment with SageMaker option. Therein, from the model dropdown, I select the endpoint model that was deployed from SageMaker. Then click the schema file upload option and choose the schema JSON file which I just now showed you and upload it. So we can see the input and output columns are all specified here. I'll click the next button. And since the field names that I used in this mapping and in the training data set exactly matches the data that I have in SAS sales data set, it's automatically mapped. But when you're working on your own models, if at all a field name is slightly different and you go to pick the correct field from your data set to feed into that field for the model, you can pick from this drop down. Click the next button here. Here in this review outputs page, I have the option to change the field name if I want to. I'll go on to prepare data and click on the save and publish option. Now I can exit this view by clicking the quick side icon from top left. The batch transform job takes about five minutes to run, so I paused this video. Let's first check under SageMaker inference and batch transform job listing to make sure that the job completed. So we see here that QuickSight auto generated job completed it took about five minutes. Let's switch back to QuickSight now. We we'll look under data sets and click on SaaS sales. We see that the import is successfully completed. So let's create an analysis from this to see the values of the prediction. I'll change the visual type to be table and add in order date, order ID, and the predicted field uh, will SLA be met. Change the order date to be sorted by descending order. We'll see for the latest orders as well. This field has been populated by the model. 
So based on uh, historical training data, SageMaker has made the prediction as to whether these new orders will be um, completed within the set SLAs or not. Hope this was good use of your time. Have a nice day ahead.